Hello, Brother Lavergia. Could you hear me? Good evening, brother. Good evening. How are you? All right. You could hear me, huh, brother? Loud sure? and clear, brother. All right. Just making sure. How about the music? Could you hear the music? Yes, brother. I could hear the music. Oh, because we can't hear on our part. I'm just wondering why. But as well, as long as you all could hear it, then, then it's fine. And as long as you could hear me, then it's also fine. So um, on the time that is uh, appointed, brother, just uh, make them stand and we'll pray in the exact time that we're supposed to. Okay, brother, we'll do. All right, brother. Thank right, you. Brother. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.
Brethren, let us stand for our prayer. Our merciful and loving Father, it is again our Father that you bless your servants to be able to come before your holy presence. And Father, we come as humble as we know how, thanking you for all of the graces and blessings that you've given us throughout our lives. Father, you call us into the fold, giving us a chance for salvation. And Father, we know as long as we fulfill your commandments that you will continue to guide us. You will continue to protect us. And we thank you, Father. And we ask you, Father, to please be with us in our Bible study tonight that we may be able to hear and understand your holy teachings so that, Father, we may be able to grow stronger in faith to continue on fulfilling our obligations and serving and glorifying the most holy name. Bless our brother that will be teaching your words. Guide him with your Holy Spirit, that he may be able to teach your word with clarity so that everyone that is listening tonight will be able to understand your truth. And Father, we will be able to go on serving you until the end of our lives. Father, please continue to guide your servants. Help us to be able to walk righteously before you. Help us not to choose any other God other than you. We pray, our Father, that you would always bless us so that we may be able to fulfill our obligations in a manner that will please and glorify the most holy name. We pray, our Father, for all of our brethren throughout the world, especially those that are being oppressed, persecuted, and running to and fro, trying to protect their lives. And those that are in jail, Father, we ask that you throw your loving arms around your children and continue to bless them, continue to guide them. Father, help us all to be able to be strong in our faith, to continue on serving you until the end of our lives. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we call on you because we know that you are our mediator. And we ask you, Lord, to please mediate our prayers to the Father, asking the Father to hear our prayers and forgive our sins so that we can continue to serve you and our Father until the end of our life. Our Father in heaven, we return to you in prayer. Again, asking that you would please send your Holy Spirit to be with us throughout our Bible study. Help us to be able to listen intently to your Holy Words so that we may be able to come better servants and serving and glorifying the most holy name. We truly believe, our Father, that you have blessed us and heard our prayer, that you've forgiven us for any sins that we've done, because we ask everything in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. Beloved uh, brothers and sisters, Yesterday was the 107th anniversary of the Church of Christ. And if there are those who should celebrate all the more this, uh, that's us because we know how God continued to set us aside to continue to be true members of the Church of Christ. We have proven already in the lesson that was taught to us Sunday in how we have the prophecies that pinpoints to us as being God's chosen people. And not only that, it is through God's commissioning in this last days that many prophecies were fulfilled with messenger that God has sent in this last days, which is why that there is a church of Christ that exists in our time. So brothers and sisters, why is it that we are so firm in our conviction as to be true firm members of the church of christ we know already fully well whatever happened to the first church of christ first church of christ many 
were led astray, and only few remain steadfast in their calling, even to the point that they have to give up everything, even their lives, even if they were to face persecution, they remain firm in their conviction because they know that they have this firm hope within them that they would also receive the promised salvation if they endure until the end. Because the one that endures until the end will be saved, according to the Lord Jesus Christ, as written in Matthew 24, 13. So how strong is the hope? of a true member of the Church of Christ. We'll begin our studies in Hebrews 6, 19, verse 3. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. According to the Holy Scriptures, what is needed so that we would be able to be steadfast and sure. Well, the Bible mentions here this hope we have as an anchor of the soul. You know, any vessels to remain in its place and not be carried away by the waves of the sea uses an anchor. But on our part, our hope serves as the anchor of our soul for us to be firm and steadfast amidst the so many things that we had to go through. If you did not have that firm conviction or the anchor for your soul. Do you think that you are still with us this very moment as among those amongst those that God continue to set aside to be true members of the Church of Christ? So what do the Church of Christ, the true Church of Christ members hope for? This is the reason why that the Bible makes mention that the hope we have as an anchor of the soul. What do we hope for? Philippians 3.20 to 21. We, however, are citizens of heaven, and we eagerly wait for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come from heaven. He will change our weak mortal bodies and make them like his own glorious body using that power by which he is able to bring all things under his room. Which is this that gives us that conviction to use and have that hope, that anchor for our soul? Well, we know when the time will come, when our Lord Jesus Christ will be sent from heaven in his second advent, this bodies of ours, this mortal bodies will be changed into like the glorious body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know how fast and how quick is the change of this body when the day of judgment come? If we just look at the other verses written in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52, and 53, brothers and sisters, it makes mention there, this body will be changed as fast as a blink of an eye. How fast is the blink of an eye? I see you're blinking, but it's like slow motion. That's not blink of an eye. That's beautiful eyes or tantalizing eyes about to fall asleep. That's not how fast the body will change on the day of judgment. Uh, the Bible says as 
fast as the blink of an eye. Try blinking, a blink of an eye. That's how fast your body, your mortal bodies will be changed to a glorious body like Christ on the day of judgment. So make sure our citizenship remains there in heaven. How many citizenship you have? Oh, I'm a dual citizen, citizen brother. I have a citizenship here in America. I have citizenship in the Philippines. Why don't you have three citizenships if it's possible? One also citizen there in heaven, right? So make sure brothers and sisters, you don't forget the greatest citizenship of all, which is it? Your citizenship in heaven. You may be citizens so of the so many countries in the world, but if you're not a citizen of heaven, you will not be able to enter God's kingdom. So make sure that we don't lose focus. It's not wrong to have citizenship in other countries, but our citizenship remains in heaven. And if that is so, we have that hope in us. And that's why there's so, uh, those who continued in their faith, they were firm. Even if they were oppressed, even if they were persecuted, even if they were cast away, even if they had to go through so much turmoil, they stood their grounds. Why? Because they know at the end of their journey, there is this great blessings, blessing of having a glorious body like our Lord Jesus Christ. So how does the Bible define those who are really firm in their conviction and how does the Bible describe those who will not be able to reach the end of their journey of having a glorious body like the Lord Jesus Christ? John 12, 35. Jesus answered, the light will be among you a little longer. Continue on your way while you have the light so that the darkness will not come upon you. For the one who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. See, brothers and sisters, how does the Bible describe those who will not be able to have that kind of citizenship in heaven or be amongst those who will have their bodies changed like into a glorious body like the Lord Jesus Christ. There are those that the Bible makes mention, but our Lord Jesus Christ makes mention that they are walking in darkness. What's so wrong if they're walking in darkness? You might be saying, for the one who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. Literally, have that ever happened like there's a blackout? You have no candles. You have no flashlight. You think that you are able to walk around so quickly in your home without having any doubt that you might stumble upon anything if there's no light? That's just literally a blackout. In the Philippines, they call it brown out. But literally, it's just like a blackout. When there's no light, no electric, you don't know where you're going because there is no light. How much more? The words of God serves as light. A lamp to our feet, the Bible says. In the book of Psalms, 119, 115. It's a lamp, a light to our feet, the Bible says. So if it's a light, a lamp to our feet, we need the words of God to guide us in this wicked world that is perverse and filled with darkness. Philippians 2.15. 
So if that is the case, brothers and sisters, how does the Bible describe those who are walking in darkness? Hence, if they are found like this on the day of judgment, for sure, they are not amongst those who will enter God's kingdom. Isaiah 59, 9 and 8. Therefore, justice is far from us, nor does righteousness overtake us. We look for light, but there is darkness for brightness, but we walk in blackness. The way of peace they have not known, and there is no justice in their ways. They have made themselves crooked paths. Whoever takes that way shall not know peace. How does the Bible describe the path that is towards darkness? Well, we know that justice is far away from that path. Why? Because they made for themselves crooked paths. So if there, were, there were, was a path that God guided you to and where you should walk in so that you will not be lost, you should not take those other paths because those other paths are crooked. How does it become crooked? When one starts to establish his own righteousness, Romans 10, 2 and 3, even if they are zealous or devoted, but they establish their own righteousness, they did not submit to the righteousness of God, which is the righteousness of God. Romans 1, 16 and 17, that is the gospel. So it is very dangerous for an individual to remain in this crooked paths because the Bible says, whoever takes that way shall not know peace. What is wrong if the day of judgment arrive and you are on those crooked paths or we are on that crooked paths because we know those who will meet with the Lord, they will have peace without holiness and peace. We cannot meet with the Lord as written in Hebrew 12, 14. So when judgment day comes and people are found in the crooked paths that there's injustice being done there and you remain there in the midst of all the clarity that you know that those paths are crooked, brothers and sisters, we know that such people will not inherit God's kingdom. Do you want to inherit God's kingdom? Do you want to enter the kingdom of God? Of course, no one will say, no, I don't want to enter. I want to be burned forever and ever in the lake of fire. No, that's just what you're probably, others are ridiculously just probably saying because the day of judgment did not yet arrive. But on that day, Brothers and sisters, if you read Luke 16, 19, all the way till that verse is finished, those verses are finished. Well, the one that oppressed Lazarus was found into the lake of fire, and he was begging for a drop of water to drop to put his finger, to put it in his tongue so that he will be quenched by the heat that he is going through. Because when he was on earth, when Lazarus was very poor, he started to oppress Lazarus. Time came in the parable that Lazarus went to heaven and the one that was oppressing went to the lake of fire. And now that person, though he was so rich here on earth, on the day of judgment, he will be the one begging for a droplet of water to quench his thirst. Could you imagine? You cannot even buy a cup of water on the day of judgment there in the lake of fire if one is not saved. So try to think of it. Try to think of what kind of destruction will there be and what kind of punishment will there be for those who remain in crooked paths. But, you know, we know what our Lord Jesus Christ says in the book of John 9, 5. He said, I am the light of the world. 
So we already know that, right? So once you know that he is the light of the world, what is it that one should do? We already know in Colossians 2, 6 and 7, for those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord, they should walk in him. So it's not just like, okay, I believe in my Savior. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, that's good. Because that's one thing that we should all do first is to accept him as our Savior. Because he was made Savior by God. Acts 5.31. We should accept him as Lord because he was made Lord by God when he was crucified on the cross. Acts 2.36. And so, brothers and sisters, we know how important our Lord Jesus Christ is. How important is Christ in our lives, knowing that he is the light of the world? What does he offer so that we would be able to remain in the light and to take ourselves out of the crooked paths? John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So knowing that Christ is the light of the world, and so if he's the light of the world, we know that we, if we look to him and also fulfill what the Bible teaches us to do, brothers and sisters, we would follow that way. That way that the Bible is mentioning, it's not crooked. Why? Because when Christ said, I am the way, the truth. So if the truth, brothers and sisters, what is the truth? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. So that path, of course, will not lead you or mislead you to a wrong direction. How absolute is this direction given to us? Christ says, the truth and the life. Why? Because there's life hidden in Christ. Colossians 3, 2. Which is that? If you read 1 Timothy 6, 18 and 19, this is the true life. This is eternal life. So eternal life is in our Lord Jesus Christ. So what is it that one should do? Christ says, no one comes to the Father except through me. So there's no other way, right? Except through our Lord Jesus Christ. So you can't invent your own way. You have to follow the way that our Lord Jesus Christ have to say. And so now we all accept that our Lord Jesus Christ is the way. Why is he the way? How does he describe those who or what one should do once he has found Christ? As what we have read, I mentioned a while ago in Colossians 2, 6 and 7. For those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord, they must walk in him. Why is it that they must walk in him? Others might be saying, how am I to walk in Christ? Christ is seated in the right hand of God. Colossians 3, 1. And I'm here. On earth, how do you expect me to enter or to walk in Christ? John 10, 9. Let's read. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. So why is Christ the way? Because he says, I am the door. What is a door? A door is something that you enter in, right? Or exit. But Christ, if you read this in the King James Version, I'm the door, he says, anyone who enters in by me will be saved. In other languages, Ako ang pintuan, sino mang taong pumasok sa akin, maliligtas. Ako ang paspul, nino mang taong lungup ka na ako, maliligtas siya. That's when the manong from the Hawaiian Islands 
we might say those are that is in the locano what must i do to be saved christ says i am the door any man who enters in me will be saved do you want to be saved what is your answer oh yes in the time of noah in order for you to be saved what was noah preaching to the people way back then enter into the ark for those who refused and laughed at him what happened well when the door was already shut they started swimming towards the big ark it was too late when they accepted the invitation of noah are we going to do that of course not we don't want to be amongst those who would strive to just enter when the day of judgment arrived already but i've entered already one might say how do i know i've entered christ first corinthians 12 27 now you are the body of christ and members individually how are we to enter in the lord jesus christ individually members of the body of christ which body are we referring to is this the physical body that uh people might be thinking of colossians 1 18 let's read colossians 1 18 and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in all things he may have the preeminence so according to the holy scriptures which is the body that we should enter the body is the church whose church matthew 16 18 christ says upon this rock i will build my church what is the name church uh what is the name of the church built by christ we already know that if it's built by christ how do the apostles call it in the book of acts 20 20 the lambs translation is we quote take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock over which the holy spirit has appointed your overseer to feed the church of christ which he has purchased with his blood what is the name of the church built by the lord jesus christ it's called the church Church of Christ. So even from the time of the apostles to the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ built a church for us to enter so that we can be amongst those who will follow that way that the Bible teaches to enter into Christ's body, the church, the church of Christ. Others might be saying, why is it that it is so much of an importance for us to belong to what our Lord Jesus Christ invites us to enter so that we can be assured of our salvation? What is the present situation of people who will reject the invitation of the Lord Jesus Christ? Ephesians, the chapters 2, verse 12. Let's read. At that time, you were apart from Christ. You were foreigners and did not belong to God's chosen people. You had no part in the covenants which were based on God's promises to his people. And you live in this world without hope and without God. What is so wrong if we will reject the invitation of the Lord Jesus Christ concerning about in how we will be able to enter God's kingdom on the day of judgment? Well, those apart from Christ, the Bible teaches us they have no hope and they have no God. Oh, is this, doesn't that hurt? Well, of course, without Christ and without God, we're completely helpless. Even Christ said in John 5, 30, I can of my own self do nothing. Are you better than Christ? Now that you are to enter his body or the church built by Christ, brothers and sisters, then you have hope. Why? Because if you belong to Christ, you belong to God. 1 Corinthians 3.23, that's recorded in the today's English version. So if the church belongs to Christ, it belongs to God. And so if you're a member of the true church of Christ, you belong to Christ and you also belong to God. Hence, remember that we must remain in the covenant. Because if we don't have this covenant within us, was there a covenant that God has made with his messenger in the book of Isaiah 41, 9 through 10? We quote, you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and said unto thee, thou art my servant. I have chosen thee, God says. 
I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteousness. What is the covenant that God made with his messenger? His righteousness will be upheld by this messenger that he has sent from Isaiah 46, 11. It says, calling a revenue bird from the east, the man who executes my counsel from a far country. Indeed, I have spoken. I will also bring it to pass. So the one who guarantees that this will be fulfilled is no other than our Lord, Almighty God. But in order for us to remain under the covenant of God, we must uphold the righteousness of God, which is the righteousness of God. Romans 1, 16 and 17, the gospel for our salvation. How do we know that we remain amongst those who can be sure of our salvation once we become true members of the church of Christ? When we put into practice the gospel, the righteousness of God, we are in the quality of being saved. First Corinthians 15, 1 and 2. So once a person becomes a member of the true church of Christ, he must not allow himself to Go back to the crooked paths where the crooked paths men mentioned there. There's no justice. There's no peace in that. So you cannot say I'm a member of the church of Christ, but yet you're practicing things that are unjust before the sight of God. And you are in a crooked path by means of establishing your own righteousness. That should not be done because the righteousness of God for our salvation in order for us to remain under the covenant of God is to fulfill the gospel, the words of God preached to us through God's commissioning in this last days to that man that God has chosen as a messenger in this last days. We already know so many prophecies pinpoint to the election of Brother Felix Manalo as being sent by God in this last days. Brothers and sisters, let us not waste that great privilege that we have. So many prophecies have been fulfilled. Even whatever happened to the church of Christ in these last days, are these other things are unfolding before our sight, showing that God continues his mission so that the church of Christ will never be turned away anymore. There is a church of Christ that will be on the day of judgment that will be a glorious church. They are the one that upholds the righteousness, the gospel. Why? Why is it that there are those who were not able to uphold the righteousness of God or the gospel? But they may say, I have become a member of the church of Christ. One might be saying, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Let's read. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God others might be saying I follow what the instruction given to me I follow what Christ said I'm the door any man who enters in me will be saved I did that brother I entered the flock I became a member of the church of Christ but yet the only thing is one might be saying uh there are times that uh, I had to just follow even even if it was against my will because I, I know that something might be, uh, I might be persecuted, I might be oppressed. Well, brothers and sisters, we understand clearly that we must allow that the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should prevail, not for the God of this world. What is, who's the God of this world anyway? The enemy of God, the devil. So if he has the world under his power, who do you think he's going to concentrate on? Who He's going to concentrate on the woman. The woman, as described in the book of 2 Corinthians 11-2, is the church. He will make war with it. Those who are keeping the laws, the, the laws of our Lord Jesus Christ, or the commandments of God, Revelation 12, 17. And so, of course, if there's a war, and what's going to happen? There will be people who will be misled. There will be people who will remain steadfast. And those who have remained steadfast, they have that anchor to hold them tightly, to continue firmly and hold tightly to what they have received. And so they will not let go. And what is so wrong if we allow to just follow anyone that will lead us astray? 
Now you might say, well, but they, they are, they're even officers. They're even ministers. They're, uh, but yet, if what they're teaching you is not in accordance to what the Bible is teaching, what will be the result of that? Matthew 15, 14. Let's read. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. So what do you think is going to happen? If by chance you would believe in someone that will teach you a wrong direction, that is no longer in the light, that is no longer in accordance to the gospel, that is no longer in accordance to the words of God, because it becomes crooked, because one starts to invent his own teachings, brothers and sisters, then brethren who would follow such people, they will also fall into a ditch. Why? Because if the one that you're following will fall into a ditch and you became a blind follower, you will also fall into a ditch. Do you just want after knowing the facts of how to be assured of salvation, that you just want to fall into a ditch or in destruction or in something that won't assure your salvation? So how can a person be rescued from darkness and be transferred to light and be saved? Let's read Acts 13, 47. I'll read to you. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth, who is being referred to here as the one commissioned by our Lord Almighty God, so that we would be able to see the light. Let's read in Acts 26, 17 and 18. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. According to the Holy Scriptures, we know who the fulfillment of this is of the light of the Gentiles is no other than Apostle Paul. How about the, what the Bible says? It will reach salvation to the ends of the earth. Yes, it will reach from the, even the time of the ends of the earth or the reemergence of the church of Christ. Why? Because we know that God has sent somebody from the time of the ends of the earth, Isaiah 41, 9 through 10. And in order for all of us to be assured of that great salvation that will be given on the day of judgment, we must live up to the teachings to the commandments, to the gospel that has been proclaimed to us. Because if not, brothers and sisters, we will be under the power of darkness. Remember, the reason why God has sent messengers, true messengers, is to open up our eyes to turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. And for those who need forgiveness after understanding that they should really stand up for what is right. They will receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me, as recorded in the Holy Scripture. So how can we recognize true messengers in the midst of those who are just merely professing? Second Peter 1.19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the dawn, until the day dawn and the day, day star arise in your heart. How is it that we we are able to find out if, if we have a true messenger. Well, we just don't claim that we have someone that has been commissioned in this last days, but we have prophecies and prophecies that pinpoint to the election of Brother Felix Manalo. So many prophecies. Isaiah 41, 9 through 10. Isaiah 43, 5 and 6. Revelation 7, 2 and 3. Acts 239 and so many other verses revelation 7 2 and 3 so many other verses that pinpoints to his being commissioned by the lord almighty god and because of this we have a more sure word of prophecy we are absolutely sure 
and whatever is happening to the church in this last days is just a mere fulfillment of the prophecy if god continues to fulfill the prophecy that he will set aside this very small remnant we could not change what is recorded and if you're among those who have been called to continue to be a member a true member of the church of christ be thankful that you have been called and that's the reason why we still celebrate the anniversary because we remain as true faithful members of the church of christ what do messengers of god don't entertain which is why we can say that they are true messengers of god let's read here in second peter 1 16 for we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. What were the things that uh, true messengers of God did not use as a basis of their faith? Well, cunningly devised fables or invented teachings. They did not uh, follow the teachings of man. They did not... Uh, entertain fables or tradition they entertain god's words the pure words of god as described in the book of isaiah 46 11 it says calling a revenous bird from the east the man who executes my counsel from a far country indeed i have spoken it i will also bring it to pass i have purposed it i will also do it so god has sent a man that will come from a far country in the east and has the consul, which is the consul of God. Psalms 107 and 11, consul of God is the words of God. So he's a preacher of God's words. Where will he come from? Not from the Near East, not from the Middle East, from the far country in the East. Why? If the ravenous bird is also that man, they must only come from one direction, the country in the Far East. Which is that country in the Far East? If you read Isaiah, the, back, the book of Isaiah 4, 3, 5, the Moffat version, from the far east will I bring your offspring. What is the description of that place in the far east? Wherefore glorify ye the God of Israel in the east, in the islands of the sea. Isaiah 24, 15 and 16. So the country that the prophesied place where this messenger will come from from the time of the ends of the earth we already know the ends of the earth is different from the end of the earth end of the earth is the end of the world matthew 24 3 the ends of the earth matthew 4 24 33 is you will see these things they're at the doors what are these things matthew 24 6 and 7 and 8 you will hear wars, rumors of war. See that you're not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So what kind of war is this? I say 34, one and two, a war where in all soldiers are involved in killing one another. What kind of war is that? A world war at this time, from the time of the ends of the earth, from the time that there's a world war, there will be a reemergence of the church. When was the church of Christ? When was it registered? July 27, 1914, at the outbreak of the First World War, there in the Far East, in the islands of the sea. Islands of the sea, more than 7,000 islands. Do you believe that? So even before we were all born, it was already there in the plan of God concerning of one he will send. But in order for a person to remain under the covenant of God, he must continue to uphold the righteousness of God, the gospel. Because if so, then the covenant will be taken away from him. And if he has no longer covenant, he has no hope. He has no God. One might be saying, I'm a member of the church of Christ. But if you don't put into practice the words of God, the gospel that was proclaimed to you, then you will not be amongst those who will enter God's kingdom. Sad to say, because in order for you to remain as a branch attached to the vine, you are to fulfill the words of God and the words of Christ, which is to love one another. John 15, 16, 17, 8, 9, and 10. All that, you could find that recorded there, brothers and sisters. So why is it that we are so firm in our conviction 
Even if we have to go to so much persecution and hardships, even if we have to endure all these oppressions that may come along our ways, why is it that we will go on even till we breathe our last? Second Timothy 4, 6, and 8. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have love his appearing. Why are we willing to be amongst those who will remain steadfast no matter what it has to take? Is it because we just want to be different? Is it because we just wanted to just go on our way and be uh, like not like among the many who would just follow without really scrutinizing the teachings that they are uh, being taught? No, the reason why we remain is because we have to fight. What is it that you fight for? Your faith. If you fight for the right of your family when they are in need of help. You will do everything for the sake of your own family. How about your faith? How about the faith of your family? You will do everything. The first members of the church of Christ, the true members of that church, they gave up their lives. Some were persecuted, some were burned, some were fed to lions, some were, some were even put to death. But the reason why they were able to endure all these things, because they know in their hearts, there's a better life, this is life. There's a life eternal that is waiting for those who will finish the race, who will keep their faith. Let's be all winners on that day. So that all that you have gone through, brothers and sisters, we know how it feels to be rejected and to be cast away and to be persecuted. We know how it feels when you have no one to turn to, when you had so many who were there for you before, but now they all just let go. We know the feeling. But the most wonderful feeling is when God starts to intervene and starts to give you a helping hand. When you feel that there's no one to help you, you turn to your God and he starts to help you. So brothers and sisters, for those ministers who think that you'll just be forsaken, by others, God will not forsake you. He will give you everything you need. Have faith. Have faith in what God can do. Because if he created the earth as recorded to be inhabited as recorded in Isaiah 45, 18, he created a fish, water, and the sky and the firmament, Job 12, 7 through 10, and Psalms 19, 1 through 4. Why can he not provide what you need? Remember what our Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 6, 33. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Have faith in those words. And so why are we willing to lose everything for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ? Did not our Lord Jesus Christ give everything for our salvation? Now it's our term when we are the one asked to give everything just for the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you willing to do that? Why are we willing to do that? Those who have that anchor of hope for their soul, for their salvation. Philippians 3, 8. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost 
for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Why are we willing to lose all things, even the important things in life, when it concerns just to gain Christ? Because according to Apostle Paul, all the other things are just rubbish if you compare it to gain Christ. Yes, you will be persecuted. Yes, you will be rejected. Yes, you will be cast away. You might be even put in jail. You might be suffering all these other things for the sake of Christ. But is it worth it? Is it worth suffering for the Lord Jesus Christ? To give everything, if it need be, we give our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is the first one who gave his life for us so that we can be saved. Now it's your turn. Now it's our turn. Prove it that he is to be followed when time is being, the time you are being tested. So what will God do to us if we have this kind of conviction? Revelations 3.10, 3.11, because... You have kept my command to persevere. I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. So if we have this conviction, to follow our Lord Jesus Christ, no matter what it had to take. What is the promise? That if we keep the commands to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world. Pandemic. The whole world is involved. But you will be kept safe in the midst of all what's going on. And also the economic economy and all the other financial crisis that may be going on. You will be taken care by the Lord. But what else that, that our Lord Jesus Christ is saying, I'm coming quickly. You know why all these other things are happening in the world? One disaster after another and so many other problems coming after one another. Only a manifestation that our salvation is drawing near. What is the instruction of the Lord? He said, hold fast to what you have. That no one may take your crop. Don't exchange your salvation for the pleasures of this world. Don't exchange your salvation for the many wealth of this world. Don't exchange your salvation because of persecution. You will not follow our Lord Jesus Christ. You will follow until the end till we receive that crown, the crown of glory that we all fight for. We will rest in our journey on the day of judgment. We will be given a glorious body like the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe right now, you're probably going through all these other trials. But on that great day, you will rest forevermore with God and the Lord Jesus Christ in the promised land. That is promised to the true faithful members of the Church of Christ. Happy anniversary to all those who are faithful, loyal followers of the Lord Jesus Christ and our God, for they are rest assured of their salvation when judgment day comes. It's just not saying that we're members of the Church of Christ, but we live up to the teachings taught to us so that we can be amongst those who will remain under the covenant of God to be saved on the day of judgment. This is our lesson. Please stand and we will pray. Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful for giving us the enlightenment of how we can prove our true loyalty and faithfulness to your most holy name. Oh God, we know that there are so many things that you expect from those whom you have called. But oh Lord, we don't know how was it made possible that we were able to endure every trouble, every 
persecution, every hardship that we have gone through and we were still being amongst those that you have chosen to remain faithfully in worshiping you. Oh Lord, one thing we are grateful for. We thank you for finding compassion, love towards your people for us to continue no matter what will happen. This is our conviction. We will remain following you and the Lord Jesus Christ. We already decided this from the start that you have called us. But if we, at the time, we felt that we were very afraid and did not know where to go. But you have embraced us. You have showed your love to us. Thank you. Thank you, our God, for giving us your love. If it weren't for your love, we would not remain in faithfully following your holy teachings. Bless all our brothers and sisters in the different parts of the world whom you have called to continue to be members of thy true church so that let them be rest assured that you will always be them there for them, that you will not forsake them in times of their needs. Dear Lord Jesus, you are the throne of grace. And you showed us a great example in how you gave everything for us. If it weren't for you, we would not have the assurance of salvation. But now you ask something from us. And we have to give everything to follow you. We are willing to do that, O oh Lord. But at the end, we know that we will gain our life, that we will have salvation if we leave everything for the sake of following you. Because in this way, it can be manifested that we give pardons to you and to our God, who is the one that first loved and called each and every one of us. Dear Lord, Almighty Father in heaven, we return to you and ask forgiveness for the many sins we have committed. And please bless those who are in the institution. Help them as well to realize the great importance of following always your teachings that all of us in due time, if it is possible, will be united once again in worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Father, we ask everything in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, we thank you once again for joining us in our Bible study for today. And uh, as we were called to be servants of the Lord Almighty God, um, may you all have a happy anniversary. I read this yesterday, but we dedicate this Thing that we will read to you to all those who continue to serve God as a true members of a, true members of the church. It says, "Those who serve, God has a special place for each of us to serve, and you have chosen to follow His path. You have been the hands, the feet, the voice, and." the love of God expressed in many different ways. You have chosen to honor him as you have served in his name. Thank you for your willingness to give yourselves and be used where God has placed you. You have blessed many lives. And as much as you have done it unto, unto one of the least of these, you did it unto me. That verse is written in the book of Matthew 25, 40. Brothers and sisters, this concludes our Bible study. Happy anniversary to all of you. Bye-bye, Paul.